Hey everybody, I'm Dan Berkowitz for Premier Guitar and PremierGuitar.com. Today I'm, I'm going to be reviewing for you the Lakeland 44AJ bass. When I took the, the Lakeland uh, 44AJ out of the case, right away I said, boy, I've seen this before somehow. And then I said, well, how have I seen it? And then I looked at their website to think about things, and it said, familiar in aesthetics, revolutionary in performance, as their kind of slogan on the website. And I said, yeah, you know, this reminds me a lot of my early 70s jazz bass. And some of the things that really reminded me of it is a very skinny nut, uh, block markers, binding along the edge of the fingerboard. All these are kind of classic uh, late 60s, early 70s, into the mid 70s even, uh, for a jazz bass. They've done a really nice job of designing the, uh, of the way that this is put together. The, the frets sit on top of the binding, so if you have to do anything to the frets, you don't have to tear up the binding. Uh, they have very beautifully rounded edges on both sides of some of the prettier frets, although they're very narrow frets, which is something that, that I wasn't quite used to seeing. Uh, but even things like the dot markers are set really nicely and, and consistently, where sometimes you see that they vary a little bit in height. But even that is done beautifully. Something that's a little different on here also is that they've used uh, hip shot vintage tuners and when they put on a vintage tuner, it's actually a reverse. So if I were to try to raise the pitch on a string, I would turn it up. And if I want to lower the pitch, I'd turn it away from me, which is exactly backwards of how almost all the bases around are, are designed. But that kind of follows how the things were done in the early days with Fender. The truss rod adjustment is right in here. And it's a little bit different than what you might see on a, a really classic vintage base, because in order to adjust the truss rod on, a, on an older base, you'd actually have to pull the neck and there'd be a little slotted screw right here. By having the, the well and still having the Allen wrench access, it kind of gives you the same feel and you don't get the thing up in the top where there's a little uh, bullet sticking out or a little recessed hole. So that's another nice touch and the pocket fits very nicely. The neck really just sits in there. I haven't tried to take it off, but I think it might be one of those that would just fit like a glove. At this point, Lakeland has actually gone to their own pickups that rather than picking up a third party uh, OEM kind of pickup, these look like single coil jazz pickups, but they're actually uh, humbucking pickups that, that cut all the noise. You can, you can solo one of the pickups alone and have near zero noise, especially with the nice shielding job inside. The controls here, you have a master volume, you have uh, a balance with detent, between the two pickups. You have um, mid-range and you have treble on top and bass on the bottom. This is actually a nice way of doing things because a lot of times when you want to adjust the voice in your sound you're going to reach for the mid-range and if it's by itself you have a much better chance than if you have to say okay now which one am I going to turn here. Happily by the way when you turn one of these the other one stays put where sometimes you'll, you'll pick up a bass and you want to pick uh, just a stack knob and like both turn, you have to hold one steady. Something else they've done real nicely is the, the master volume has a pull-up that defeats the preamp. It's great if you're playing in a set and all of a sudden the battery goes out on you. It's also if you want to have a completely pure sound that just goes straight from the pickups out. The body is, is a uh, swamp ash with a cap of flame maple. It looks really pretty. The flame maple adds a little bit of extra zing to the sound, while the swamp ash provides a nice light but resonant body. It's very, very uh, traditional kind of wood to be using. The bridge is Lakeland's own design that has some familiarity with Fender and with uh, Music Man as well. But there's something that's very nice in this bridge that you can string it either through and come out in the back or you can come out through the back of the tail of the bridge as well. So you can get, some people say there's not much difference, but I think what I've felt is that you can get a brighter, kind of a little bit punchier sound if you go through the bridge and a little bit more sustain and a little bit uh, rounder of a sound if you go through the body. If I want to do a walking bass line and just use both pickups even and all the tone controls fat, flat, It's not as bright as, as your typical jazz. That part is not a familiar sound, but it's one that I think will just sit in the mix nicely. 
uh, and feel really musical and smooth the whole time. But if you want to get a fatter sound, if you want to get kind of a, uh, uh, like a reggae kind of a sound, you can actually take the pickup uh, control, go all the way to the neck pickup, take the, take the uh, treble and dial back a little bit, and then bump up the, the bottom end. And what you end up with is something that's a big fat sound. I'm not sure exactly how I've dialed it in, but I bet you'll hear the diff big difference here. Now the other way you can go with it is instead favor just the, the uh, bridge pickup, and I still have the volume up all the way. I'm going to take the mid and dial it up a little bit take the treble and dial it up and leave the bass basically flat and what you should get is kind of a brighter funky sound as I said at the beginning it's really a familiar instrument, but yet a lot of technical innovations that separate it from just your ordinary bass in this style. If there's anything that I thought maybe I would like a little different in it, that might be that I would expect a jazz bass to have just a bit more snap to the sound. This has a very smooth sound, a nice sustainy sound. More snap than a, uh, than a set neck or neck through, but still I'd like just a little more snap. So anyhow, there you have it. Dan Berkowitz for Premier Guitar and PremierGuitar.com. If you want to read my full review, you can take a look at the May 2011 issue of Premier Guitar or go online and take a look there too.